This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reginald's Christmas Revel by Saki. Read for LibriVox.org by Dan Three Trees. They say, said Reginald, that there's nothing sadder than victory except defeat. If you've ever stayed with dull people during what is alleged to be the festive season, you can probably revise that saying. I shall never forget putting in a Christmas at the Babwalds. Mrs. Babwald is some relation of my father's, a sort of to-be-left-till-called-for cousin, and that was considered sufficient reason for my having to accept her invitation at about the sixth time of asking, though why the sins of the father should be visited by the children. You won't find any notepaper in that drawer. That's where I keep old menus and first-night programs. Mrs. Babwald wears a rather solemn personality and has never been known to smile, even when saying disagreeable things to her friends or making out the stores list. She takes her pleasures sadly. A state elephant at a Durbar gives one a very similar impression. Her husband gardens in all weathers. When a man goes out in the pouring rain, to brush caterpillars off rose trees, I generally imagine his life indoors leaves something to be desired. Anyway, it must be very unsettling for the caterpillars. Of course, there were other people there. There was a major somebody who had shot things in Lapland or somewhere of that sort. I forget what they were, but it wasn't for want of reminding. We had them cold with every meal almost, and he was continually giving us details of what they measured from tip to tip as though he thought we were going to make them warm under things for the winter. I used to listen to him with a rapt attention that I thought rather suited me, and then one day I quite modestly gave the dimensions of an okapi I had shot in the Lincolnshire fens. The major turned a beautiful Tyrian scarlet. I remember thinking at the time that I should like my bathroom hung in that color, and I think that at that moment he almost found it in his heart to dislike me. Mrs. Babwald put on a first aid to the injured expression and asked him why he didn't publish a book of his sporting reminiscences. It would be so interesting. She didn't remember till afterwards that he had given her two fat volumes on the subject with his portrait and autograph as a frontispiece and an appendix on the habits of the arctic muscle. It was in the evening that we cast aside the cares and distractions of the day and really lived. Cards were thought to be too frivolous and empty a way of passing the time, so most of them played what they called a book game. You went out into the hall to get an inspiration, I suppose. Then you came in again with a muffler tied round your neck and looked silly, and the others were supposed to guess that you were Wee McGregor. I held out against the inanity as long as I decently could, but at last, in a lapse of good nature, I consented to masquerade as a book, only I warned them that it would take some time to carry out. They waited for the best part of forty minutes while I went and played wine glass skittles with the page boy in the pantry. You play it with a champagne cork, you know, and the one who knocks down the most glasses without breaking them wins. I won, with four unbroken out of seven. I think William suffered from over-anxiousness. They were rather mad in the drawing room at my not having come back, and they weren't a bit pacified when I told them afterwards that I was at the end of the passage. I never did like Kipling, was Mrs. Babwalt's comment when the situation dawned upon her. I couldn't see anything clever in Earthworms Out of Tuscany, or is that by Darwin? Of course, these games are very educational, but personally, I prefer bridge. On Christmas evening, we were supposed to be especially festive in the Old English fashion. The hall was horribly drafty, but it seemed to be the proper place to revel in, and it was decorated with Japanese fans and Chinese lanterns, which gave it a very old English effect. A young lady with a confidential voice favored us with a long recitation about a little girl who died or did something equally hackneyed, and then the major gave us a graphic account of a struggle he had with a wounded bear. I privately wished that the bears would win sometimes on these occasions. At least they wouldn't go vaporing about it afterwards. Before we had time to recover our spirits, we were indulged with some thought reading by a young man whom one knew instinctively had a good mother and an indifferent tailor. 
the sort of young man who talks unflaggingly through the thickest soup and smooths his hair dubiously as though he thought it might hit back. The thought reading was rather a success. He announced that the hostess was thinking about poetry and she admitted that her mind was dwelling on one of Austin's odes, which was near enough. I fancy she had been really wondering whether a scrag end of mutton and some cold plum pudding would do for the kitchen dinner next day. As a crowning dissipation, they all sat down to play progressive halma with milk chocolate for prizes. I've been carefully brought up, and I don't like to play games of skill for milk chocolate, so I invented a headache and retired from the scene. I had been preceded a few minutes earlier by Miss Langshan Smith, a rather formidable lady who always got up at some uncomfortable hour in the morning and gave you the impression that she had been in communication with most of the European governments before breakfast. There was a paper pinned on her door with a signed request that she might be called particularly early on the morrow. Such an opportunity does not come twice in a lifetime. I covered up everything except the signature with another notice to the effect that before these words should meet the eye, she would have ended a misspent life, was sorry for the trouble she was giving, and would like a military funeral. A few minutes later, I violently exploded an air-filled paper bag on the landing and gave a stage moan that could have been heard in the cellars. Then I pursued my original intention and went to bed. The noise these people made in forcing open the good lady's door was positively indecorous. She resisted gallantly, but I believe they searched her for bullets for about a quarter of an hour, as if she had been a historic battlefield. I hate traveling on Boxing Day, but one must occasionally do things that one dislikes. End of story, Reginald's Christmas Revel, by Saki.